Hey guys, I uh, hope you guys are doing well. So in this video, I'm going to be solving a question that's related to probability. Probability, I noticed, is one topic that uh, I don't have a lot of videos on on my channel and you guys have uh, requested me to solve a few questions also. So here I am. Uh, I know I'm making a video after ages. It certainly feels like ages. Uh, that's because uh, right after the mini series, right after you guys were done with the mini series, I thought I'd take a break. That break went longer than expected and uh, I've been really trying to push myself to get back into video recording mode. So here's here's my first attempt and uh, let's see, let's get straight to it. So this is a past paper question that I'm gonna be solving. It's from October, November, 2016 and paper one variant two. So probability is a topic that can swing either way. It can come in paper one or in paper two. So yeah, <clears throat> so it says four marks Four cards are marked with the numbers one, two, three, and four. One card is chosen at random. A second card is then chosen at random from the remaining three cards. So basically, one problem that a lot of students uh, have when doing probability questions is that they it's kind of difficult to understand whether the, the question is with replacement or whether it is without replacement. So one way to understand is by reading the question carefully and see what the question says. When you're selecting two objects, okay, from the same uh, set, from what can you say, from the same, um, so you have a certain number of objects and you're selecting two. The only way to do that is when you do it without replacement. So you pick one and then you pick another. So that's the way you'll end up with two objects towards the end. Over here, the question is very explicit though. It says a second card is then chosen at random from the remaining three cards. So that means the card that we pick is no more included in the deck, which is why you'll see that this has been blotted out one, one, okay? And so is this and so is this and so is this, okay? <clears throat> So, and what exactly are you doing? You're summing the numbers up. So that means you're just simply adding them up. So the so sum of the numbers on the two cards, on the two chosen cards is calculated. So let's do that. So if the first card is two and the second card is one, the sum is going to be three. Similarly, if the first card is three and the second card is one, so it's going to be four, five, and then three, five, six, and then four, five, and seven, and then five, six, seven. So be careful when you're um, when you're writing down the answers. Okay, uh, make sure that you uh, double check it okay, before you move on. So you just get one mark for filling this table up, and we just did that. There you go. Then it says, what is the probability that the sum is less than two? So let's see. Do we have a sum that is less than two? The answer to that is no. So that means there is a zero percent chance that the sum is going to be less than two. So that means it's going to be zero simple what is the probability that the sum is greater than five so greater than five could be six seven eight all the numbers that are greater than five so it doesn't go up to eight so let's highlight all the terms that are greater than five so we have two sixes so that's two and we have two seven so that's four however now four is the favorable outcome right that's the formula that probability revolves around favorable divided by total total outcomes are going to be so we have three here three here three here and three here so that's equal to 12 so that means the total is equals to 12 or one way to work out the total which by the way when simplified is equals to one upon three one way to work out the total number of outcomes is by simply multiplying i'll tell you what i mean so when you're picking a card for the first time how many options do you have you have four options and when you're picking a card for the second time how many options do you have you have three options so four times three equals to what four times three equals to 12 and this is basically how you can work out the total number of outcomes and always remember that we multiply we never add we always multiply so that was one question this was from as i mentioned october november 2016 let's move on i have another question and this one is from may june 2017 paper 2 variant 2 so that means feel free to use a calculator okay so it says Ravina spins two fair spinners each numbered one to four her score is the value when the numbers on two spinners are multiplied together so here since we have two spinners they're two different spinners so that means if you have one in the first attempt you can get one in the second attempt because they're two independent spinners all right and uh, the scores are obtained by multiplying the numbers together so that means if i want to fill the table up so if i have three on the first and two on the second so the result is going to be six remember we're multiplying okay as the question suggests and four times two is eight and let's quickly fill this table up one times three is three two times three is six three times three is nine four times three is twelve and then four eight 12 and 16. There you go. You got two marks for just multiplying numbers. Find the probability that Romina's score is less than four. Okay, so let's highlight all the terms that are less than four. So we have one, two, three, and then we have two again, and we have a three. Let me see if I haven't missed out anything. Nope, I haven't. So how many numbers have I highlighted? One, two, three, four, and five. So that's five. Oops, sorry from a total of 16. Why? Because four in the first attempt, four in the second, so four times four is 16. 
so 5 upon 16 and that folks is the final answer calculate the probability that Rowena scores an even number give your answer as a fraction in its lowest terms okay even numbers so I'm gonna highlight all the even numbers in blue so 2 is an even number 4 is an even number 2 is an even number 4 6 8 and then we have 6 and 12 and then we have 4 8 12 16 so we have a total of 1 uh, 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so we have a total of 12 even numbers from 16 so this one simplified is equal to 3 upon 4 okay Phoebe says that Rowena score is more likely to be a square number than a factor of 6 okay so what exactly I'm sure you guys all know what a square number is perfect squares are square numbers but what exactly is a factor of 6 so factors of 6 are numbers that can that you can divide 6 by oh, sorry uh, that 6 can be divided by yeah that you can divide 6 by and you get no remainder so for example all the numbers that have six in their table are basically factors of six so square numbers are going to be one four nine and sixteen factors of six are going to be one two three and six okay so here's what we're going to do we're going to write down all the square numbers okay so i'll write all the square numbers here and here i'll write all the factors of six so how many square numbers do we have we have okay so instead let me just circle them with red okay so the square numbers i'm circling them with red so one is a perfect square four is a perfect square four again is a perfect square and nine is a perfect square four again is a perfect square and 16. so all together we have uh one two three four five and six so we have six square numbers so that means the probability of getting a square number is six out of 16. factor of six so this let's uh, circle this in purple so one is a factor of six, two is a factor of six, three is a factor of six, two again, six, of course, three, six, and that's about it. So how many numbers have I circled in purple? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So probability of getting a factor of 16, this uh, factor of seven, sorry, seven upon 16. So think of it this way. If you were betting at this point, what would you put your money on? Would you put your money on that the number is going to be a factor of six or would you put your money on whether it's going to be a square number? If I were you, I would definitely bet on factor of six because you know that's more likely to happen because we, it comes a total of seven times out of 16 and square number basically comes a total of six times out of 16. So our final answer, is she correct? Uh, no, it's not likely to be a square number because six over 16 is not greater, is less than basically seven over 16, okay? And, or you can elaborate and write it that the probability of getting a factor of six is higher than the probability of getting a square number and make sure to mention the probability also anyway uh this was as i mentioned from may june 2017 paper 2 variant 2 okay here's another question i think i'll make a separate video on that in this video let's solve this question which is from may june 2014 paper 2 variant 2 by the way if you guys want me to solve uh any questions you can reach out to me on instagram you can mention in the comment section okay and uh, hopefully i'll make them very soon inshallah okay so it says a bag contains six identical balls number two three four five six and seven a ball is taken from the bag at random find as a as a fraction in its lowest terms the probability that lowest terms by the way that reminds me did i simplify the answers above yeah i did okay so whenever the question gives you a condition of giving you an answer in its lowest terms make sure to follow that okay so it says here uh, a bag is taken from the bag at random find the probability in its lowest terms that uh, find uh, find as a fraction in its lowest terms the probability that the number on the ball is a multiple of three so multiple of three basically means numbers like three and six although nine also but in this we'll just have three and six so that's a total of two out of six so that means one out of three prime number so prime numbers are numbers that have just two distinct factors one and the number itself so in this set of numbers two is a prime number three is a prime number five is a prime number seven is also a prime number so basically four out of six which means two out of three and there you go two out of three it is now the question says that all six balls are replaced in the bag two balls are drawn from the bag one after another without replacement so make sure that you underline the word without replacement the two numbers on the balls are added together complete this possibility diagram to show all the outcomes okay so what's going to happen because of without replacement is the following you can see that the question has blotted out two two okay reason because is that once you've taken out two in the first attempt you can't take it out again so what you should do immediately is that you should cross out all the things that are not going to happen okay so that way you don't end up accidentally writing down the value here 
So I'm going to fill up the rest of the table. So 2 plus 3 is 5, and then 2 plus 4 is 6, and then 2, plus 5 is 7, 8, and 9. All right, I'm just going to quickly fill this up. All right, now that we have filled up the table, let's see what the question says. It says, find the probability that the sum of the numbers is odd. So that's pretty easy. All you got to do is just highlight all the odd numbers, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So 5, 7, 9, and then 5, 7, 9 again, and then 7, 9, and 11, and then 7, 9, 11, and then 9, 11, 13, and then 9, 11, 13 from here also. All right, so let's just count them up. So technically, we just have three from each row. So 3, 6, 9, 12, uh, 15, and 18. So we all together, we have a total of 18 odd numbers from 30. Achha, how did I get 30? So here's how I got 30. When you're drawing for the first time, you have six options. And then since it's without replacement, that means the second time you decide to draw a ball, how many options do you have? You have five, okay? Because one has already been taken out. So six times five equals to 30, which is how the total outcome is 30. So 18 upon 30 is equals to what? Let's simplify this using six. So three upon five is the final answer. So three upon 15 instead of three upon five. All right, then it says less than eight. So I'm just gonna circle all the numbers that are less than eight. So five, six, seven, so that's three. 5, 7, so that's 3 plus 2, 5, and then we have uh, 6 and 7, so that's uh, 7, 5 plus 2, 7, and then we have one more 7, so that's a total of 8. So let's count them again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So all together we have 8 numbers, and then the total is still 30, so if I simplify this, I get 4 upon 15, and that folks is the final answer. Yeah, so there you go, I hope you guys understood this uh, part. And uh, if there are any questions that you guys would like me to solve, you can reach out to me on Instagram or just mention in the comment section. And that's it for this video. See you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.